Hi, and welcome to How to D&D. My name is Fred Wheeler, and today I want to talk about the variant rules for flanking. This is optional rules in the Dungeon Master's Guide. You can find it on page 251. Flanking is something that was very familiar to people in 3.5 and 4e, and uh, it hasn't really carried over to 5th ed edition Dungeons and Dragons, unless you decide to use the variant rules. Flanking rules work best if you are using a grid and miniatures. Theatre of the mind, it's much harder to actually apply something like flanking. Flanking gives combatants a simple way to gain advantage on attack rolls against a common enemy. A creature can't flank an enemy that it can't see. So if you can't see the enemy, you can't flank it. A creature also can't flank while it is incapacitated, or in other words, unconscious. A large or larger creature is flanked as long as at least one square or hex of its space qualifies for flanking. In this particular video I'm only going to cover the flanking rules for a square grid. Something like hexes, a little bit more difficult, take more time. If you want that, put it in the comments and I will do a video on it. When a creature and at least one of its allies are adjacent to an enemy and on opposite sides or corners of the enemy's space, they flank that enemy, and each of them gets advantage on the melee attack rolls against that enemy. When in doubt about whether two creatures flank an enemy on a grid, trace an imaginary line between the centres of the creature's spaces. If the line passes through the opposite side of or corner of the enemy's space, the enemy is flanked. So first we have the party, they're in a lair of some kind, and they are fighting some skeletons. Now you can see there is a skeleton right here and the paladin is facing off. Now the fighter could move up and flank that creature if it wanted to by moving directly behind the skeleton. So 5, 10, 15, 20. Moves there. So this is a flanking position. Or if the paladin was off to the side and the fighter was off to the side, this would also qualify as flanking. And of course the same thing applies the other way around. So flanking a medium-sized creature, that's how it's done. If we start looking at something like a large creature, so the next example is a large creature. This is a, a large scorpion that they are fighting. We have the paladin here on the square right there, and you can see that the fighter is opposite. So this is flanking. This is also qualified as flanking. And if you want to diagonally uh, flank, you can. That would be classified as flanking also. And of course, this exact reverse of that as well. That is considered flanking. In the case of a huge creature, flanking would look like this. You can see that the paladin here is opposite the fighter, uh, or could be on opposite corners. That would also qualify as flanking. Uh, flanking can also be qualified by being here. Uh, even this can qualify as flanking. This is considered flanking. Now we have a gargantuan creature. This giant here is taking up four by four squares. So flanking works pretty sim um, simply. Uh, this is qualified as flanking here. That would qualify as flanking. That qualifies as flanking. Uh, the diagonals on the corners would qualify as flanking. This qualifies as flanking. That's everything I have on the flanking rules for a square grid. Uh, if you found this video helpful or informative, please share, like, and subscribe. Make a comment below if you have any questions on the flanking rules. I will do my best to answer those questions. Until next time, keep rolling those 20s.